building value is what we're talking about here. Yep. If you build value, people want to work with you. If you build value, people in your organization will do more mm -hmm. than if you don't. Uh, a lot of this is about becoming a student, becoming attractive. Absolutely. Um, becoming interesting, right. become, becoming a person of influence. Right. Uh, some of that's through books, yours and others. Some of that's through programs. Some of that's through modeling, learning from other people, mimicking other people. That was big for me. Absolutely. Same here. That's, you know, my, I spent so much time listening to my mentors on the phone with personal sponsors and how they spoke that I literally talk like they do now. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's... You get a little piece of that and you go, oh, okay, that person... You can tell that they their were energy, a, their posture. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're the Jim Rohn disciple. Or yeah. they're a this person disciple, yeah. or whatever it happens to be. Um, well, let's do this. Uh, you know, uh, uh, I want to ask you one question that I like to ask of everybody that I have on. Um, most people have a defining moment mm. in their life, or several defining moments. I've had dozens of defining moments where literally you take a right turn or a left turn, you know, and your life is completely different. Mm. Uh, when it comes to your network marketing professional career was there a defining moment for you did something did something stick out as a moment that changed you there's a couple yeah. I'm gonna try and I'll try and nail it down to one or two um, one was uh, was was reading a, an Anthony Robbins quote uh, that I'm very fond of that is uh, everything you need is already within you yeah. and it was kind of surrendering to that mm. um, and to, and to realize that that is actually true. Um, Everything you need is already within you. Yeah, to, okay. to do whatever you want. And and we all think that there's outside influences around us that are keeping us in the box. There's that, tools, that other people, but there's nothing holding you back. Right, yeah. so it was, it was really internalizing that and surrendering to that. And, and then the other would be, uh, you know, in Dallas, probably the lowest point in my life uh, in this process. You know, been in the industry five, six years, family, thinks I'm nuts, you know, I'm in my 20s now, my friends have nice jobs and, and whatever, and all they want from me to do is get a real job and get some money. I've been living in an apartment with no furniture for years now, right. and um, and it was just driving home on the highway, you know, right here, 70, 71, 77 in Dallas, and uh, just, man, breakdown, mm. and uh, in the car, and, and uh, just, you know, extremely emotional time, and it's like, you know what, I... I just ha I, I can't take this anymore, stress level wise. Tell, tell me what wise. happened in the car because I had a uh, almost identical experience. I mean, it just that was it. It's like the pressure. I put so much pressure on myself for so many years with no results to show for it that I was just you know an emotional breakdown, just mm -hmm. yelling, crying, whatever. And, I was uh, I was mad at God. I was like, you know, come on, give this kid a break. Oh, I was pissed. <laughs> you and, know, and, and yeah. God God was really actually. Some of God's greatest gifts are unanswered prayers, and the unanswered yeah. prayer yeah, yeah. for me was I had to work on me. And but anyway, so well, well, now the, the, the I mean the end result of that is is like um, get so you, did you pull over? No, I just, didn't need to pull just over. It was just kind of you know, yeah, I was probably through. stuck in traffic. But, okay. but you know, I mean the end result of that was that I kind of let the emotional pressure that I put on myself go, and I just said, oh well, I'm just gonna, you know what. I'm just going to keep trying it, and I'll, if I get results, great. If I don't, great, whatever. But I took all that, that pressure off of myself. And uh, at that point, that really had a huge change, because now when I talk to prospects, yeah, I didn't care if they joined me or not anymore. It's so important to emotionally detach. I'm just it? like, so I don't, you know what, I'm, I'm so over this now. I'm, I'm going to kill myself and get a heart attack if I keep putting this pressure on me. So it's like, I just don't give a shit. Right. And on the t people on the talk on the phone was like, "Hey, this this is what it is. If you don't like it, or I I, yeah, that's that. when I started saying, you know, you, this, you're probably not right for me. When I started giving myself permission to say no to them, say no to them, and then all of a sudden you have the power. And that little that I know is a whole part of the attraction marketing thing. Is you know, one of the best things you can do is let the prospect know that I don't care if you join me or not. This isn't about me making a sale. This is about me How deciding start that a I'm going to spend want. my time with you." Yeah. And uh, why should I do that? What do you have to offer me as yeah. instead of someone else? And that flips the whole dynamic. Yeah. And all of a sudden, when they, they start see selling. that you don't care yeah. and that you're willing to walk away, that's when they're willing to say, oh, man, you know, okay. And gee, what do you know? You start to 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, you know, so I'd have to say that's that's. That was a real ones. big click. Huh? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, me too. I, 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 the I had the emotional thing where I pulled over to the side of the road, got out of the car, yelled up at the sky, mm -hmm. you know, the whole deal, for real. <laughs> and then felt like an idiot, got back in the car and kept driving and said, you know, but uh, I, I'm, I'm still waiting for the answer. And the answer really was I had to develop myself. Yeah. Uh, but I will tell you, getting to the point where you can emotionally detach from an outcome when you talk to a prospect and flip the dynamic yeah. and say, what do you have to offer this organization versus right. selling yourself to them constantly, constantly, constantly yeah. is so important. I can't overemphasize same with, that. Same with downline members. Yeah. I mean, you get to a point where people leave, they go to another company, and these are your friends that you spend time with and they're producing your income. I love you anyway. And it's like, yeah, it's, it's like, okay, and it's just a part of business. I mean, yep. business is challenges every day and overcoming those challenges. And, um, I mean, my top producer at the time brought in hundreds and hundreds of people into my group, just, you know, left one day. I didn't care. It doesn't matter because it's not going to change the long-term end result. And if you're not willing to, to deal with the little challenges, and that was a big one. It didn't and end the friendship, the punches, probably. No, right? no, no, not at all. It's just like, hey, you know, good, but it's... It didn't change. I wasn't emotionally attached to, to the process, and I can't tell you in the same way how many big leaders you've talked to since then that you could have expressed an interest in working with you in your business. I mean, it happens all the time, and I literally forget to call them ever again, and I, I don't, I just don't care anymore because it's not going to ultimately have an impact on my end result. People will still call, and people will still, yeah. you know, it's it, yeah. it, it, it puts you in a place where you as a professional put value in you. Right. You develop your own internal self-esteem, and if people see that value, fantastic, and if they don't, it's okay. That's their journey. Right. You know, once you can get there, you can get really powerful. Okay. Right. Yeah. All right. Um, well, look, I appreciate you spending it. It's, it's 8 million degrees outside 100, right 105, now. 105 <laughs> degrees outside. But. We dragged this uh, umbrella over to give us a little bit of protection out by the swimming pool here. Uh, so Mike's you know, gracious enough to do this, and um, he's got to go pick up his, his bride here in a little bit. But what kind of closing thoughts? These people that watch this program mm -hmm. every day, right. they want this really bad. Right. They want to become network marketing professionals. They want to turn this this profession into something that they're proud of. Mm -hmm. and can, they can deliver all the best things that our, our profession has. Right. They want that for their families. What would you, as they're reinventing themselves and they're developing, they're learning these skills, what kind of advice, what kind of enclosing comments would you offer to them? Uh, I'd have to say that more than anything else, you have to master one, at least one skill set and whatever it is that interests you most, whether it is generating leads online, whether it is presenting on stage or in front of a crowd of people or, you know, kicking butt on the telephone, you have to master one skill set uh, to get results of any kind. And, um, and to become world class, you have to develop a half a dozen skill sets. But yeah, but the results start with one. Yeah. You're not going to get results doing anything low class or mediocre. Yeah. Uh, so you have to get world class at one skill. Again, pick it, whatever it may be for you. Um, and at that point, you're going to get results. And when you're getting results, that's just going to compound into each other and kind of roll and give you momentum. And, and you just continue to develop from that process. So, you know, if, if you're not sponsoring people and if you're not building an organization right now, it's because you don't have any value to offer anybody. And that sounds like a crappy thing to hear. But that is the truth. If you're having trouble sponsoring people, it means they don't see any value in working with you. So how do you change that? You go master at least one skill set and as soon as you know how to do that and, and control that and, and whatever it may be, now you have value to offer someone. Yep. And then you go master another one. And, and that's bring more that value. Is the ball rolling. Yeah. Right. Sure. I like that. Go master a skill set, then you have value for people. Yeah. And, actually... and things, again, that's just, that gets the ball rolling and gives you the confidence and the results and the feedback that, you know, just help this game become fun. Yeah, you and... become known for something. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, like sure. It. Yeah. All right. Well, Mike. Thank you so much. Yeah, this is for great. offering Thanks, offering a little value to the network marketing pro community. Yeah, um, I appreciate your continued support of the profession. And um, here's my wish for you, everyone: is that you decide to become a network marketing professional, that you decide to learn a skill, even if it's just one, to become really good at, master it, that you decide to go pro. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a better way. Let's go tell the world. Here from 8,000 degree <laughs> Dallas, Texas, Service with uh, with friend Mike Dillard. Everybody, have a great day, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye bye.